you may have noticed that I have been using the units Pascal seconds, Pascal times seconds for dynamic viscosity or the effective dynamic viscosity. So this came from the equation tau equals to mu effective or mu if it's Newtonian, uh, du dy. So to balance this, you have to have Pascal seconds as the units for dynamic viscosity. Now, if you look at a book, you might find that instead of using Pascal seconds, they use centipoise, also abbreviated as CP or poise. So usually poise is not written just P, but just spelled out poise. So this unit is named after the uh, scientist Jean Leonard Marie Pochol. So the relationship between poise and the Pascal second is that one Pascal second, one Pascal second is equals to 10 poise. Or uh, if you look at it in terms of centipoise, then one centipoise is equals to one millipascal seconds. The centipoise was chosen so that the viscosity or dynamic viscosity of water is approximately one. So it's approximately one centipoise, but actually it's more like 0 0.899 centipoise or 0 0.9 approximately 0 0.9 centipoise at uh, 25 degrees Celsius and room pressure conditions. So Poisson or uh, the unit poise was named after him and he was a physicist and physiologist from who lived between 1797 and 1869, so a few hundred years ago. So he worked in the forces applied on the blood vessels by blood or its flow. So he studied the flow of human blood in narrow tubes and came up with the Poisson equation. So this is also known as the hagen poisson equation, co-crediting the two inventors, and it was derived around 1838. So there are certain assumptions made by this equation. One is that it's incompressible, the fluid is incompressible, which is approximately true, but second, the flow is Newtonian, which is usually not true. And then third, the flow is laminar. So laminar flow is a smooth flow, like in streamlines, while the opposite of laminar flow is turbulent flow, where the fluid mixes and flows in a uh, swirly patterns or other uh, non-uniform ways. But it was necessary to make these assumptions to derive a simple equation and it's useful because you come at an approximate value and then you can apply the corrections due to the blood being non-Newtonian or the blood being non-laminar. But it's useful to get there as a first approximation. So like with many other things in biomechanics, um, the equations only get you to a certain place and then the exact thing, uh, you have to experiment and find out whether it is exactly followed or there are some corrections you have to make. So the equation itself looks something like this. So there are different forms of the equation depending on what you use as the parameter. So the equation in one form 
looks like delta p is equals to 32 mu l v divided by d squared where delta p is the pressure difference or the pressure loss so if you have a narrow blood vessel and you're pumping blood through this blood vessel then the pressure at one side is higher so the higher pressure goes to lower pressure the flow goes from higher pressure to lower pressure and the change in pressure as it goes through this pipe is delta p and d is the diameter so it's the diameter of the pipe mu as always is the dynamic viscosity l is the length of the pipe and v is the velocity of flow so the velocity along the pipe is not constant as we know for uh, due to the shear stresses in the fluid because the viscosity is not zero but this is more like the average velocity so more like the average velocity of flow